Forte's Ice Cream Parlour Mumbles was established in 1936. Originally located in Oystermouth Square, it quickly became a regular spot for families, teenagers and children alike. 85 years on, Forte's is still located overlooking the beautiful Limeslade Bay, where it has been since 1963. It is still very much a local favourite to buy one of their famous homemade ice creams. Forte's has offered many different flavours over the years, from their famous vanilla to blackberry to salted caramel. In recent years, Forte's has introduced a vast array of new flavours, such as gin and elderflower, cream egg, Baileys and many more. Forte's holds many memories for locals in the community. Having worked here myself for the past four years, I've loved hearing everyone's stories of when they were little, getting a Knickerbock of Glory, North Pole, or quite simply, their first Vanilla 99. Today, I'm meeting Lucia Macari, third generation owner of Forte's, to learn more about the history of this iconic ice cream parlor. I asked her how her family came about setting up an ice cream parlor in Mumbles. It's a long story, starting back in the early 20s, where after the First World War, Italy was hard to survive, especially in a mountainous region. So my paternal grandparents, born in, in this Italian village, uh, married there. Then my grandfather uh, came over through to Scotland because his brothers were all already in Scotland, set up in business. Um, started working for them, saved some money then for my grandmother to come over um, and worked for family initially in Greenock in Scotland and then that's where the three eldest children were born. After uh, about 10 years uh, they managed to get into a partnership um, with four other relations or one of four down in Brighton so that they moved wherever there was an opportunity where they could see a business would thrive, you'd move. Um, they worked there then for two years and then my grandfather, non Giuseppe, had an opportunity of a cousin came up to him for partnership, just the two of them. In Mumbles, this, his cousin, Consalve Forte, used to go travelling around Britain finding sites and buildings that were ideal for any hospitality business and would put his name down hence why we trade under the name Forte he was the founder of finding the right premises that's how 1936 the business in the Duns which is Oystermouth Square came about so luckily we managed to secure the house which was above to the side of the building um, so that's where I grew up in my first few years um, and it just went from there. The flat roof of the cafe itself was my playground. You know, I used to ride my bike up there and, and what very much in my mind was my grandfather, obviously, you know, being from a mountain village in Italy, they tended the land, they worked the land, without that you didn't eat. Um, he had a greenhouse on the top of the veranda and I can smell the tomato plants very much whenever you, you, you smell the, the tomatoes on the vine, that takes me back to the greenhouse on that veranda. And I've got a picture of him tending and open flower beds with his lettuce and everything. Lovely times. and, and always living with my uncles, living with my grandfather. It was, it was very much lovely family time. So after a few years of, of being in, in Mumbles, obviously Second World War happened. A uh, lot of animosity against Italians and, and the like. And although luckily my father and his brother and sister were born here and they were classed as British by birth, my grandparents weren't. Um, so my non Giuseppe had to be interned. He met his brother at uh, Liverpool docks, both Italian born, and there were two boats in the harbour. 
one was a large one and my grandfather had the foresight to say the larger of the two boats is going further than the smaller one so even if we get called up we're not going to go on the large boat ship which luckily he went on the smaller one and both him and his brother ended up on the Isle of Man instead of being on the Andorra Star which was bombed or torpedoed by a German U-boat off the west coast of Ireland where half the internees and German prisoner of wars died. So Nonna then, she had to go inland, she couldn't be by the sea at all. Um, so luckily she had a sister up near Aberdeer and that's where the last and youngest uncle of mine was born, Tony. Uncle Elio, being 18, he had to go and conscripted into the army and the catering corps. And my father, Olympio, um, was a Bevan boy in the mines. So luckily they had a good manageress running the cafe and kept it safe until everyone could come back on site. So then after the war, opportunities to get other premises came available. So initially then they had the, a cafe um, in Caswell Bay, which we've got some video footage of. Um, that was 1946, only till 1948. Lime Slave Kiosk, which we still own to today, that we got that in 1947. Langland Corner, 1951, for a few years there, where uh, one of my father's cousins came over from Italy to help. The family always liked a, a, a family member to be in each premises to ensure that it ran to their standards. Um, and then Dunn's Lane premises, down the side, a lot of the people now in their 70s remember the espresso bar and Uncle Tony. And that just came about by chance. It was, uh, I don't know what it was used for, but it was a very small, thin premises and it was offered to my family, which my uncle took. Um, they put a jukebox in there, my uncle Tony, and all the Cokes, uh, bottles of Coca-Cola in those days. I think one year he hit the record for the most sold in Wales. It was a very popular rendezvous uh, for a younger generation rather than the main cafe was for more family orientated. Then Union Street in Swansea, we managed to get that uh, mid-50s until 1978 and everything was, was good for quite a few years. The last premises that we required is the one that we're sitting in today, which is a, a cafe in Limeslade Bay. So, this has been in the family since 1963, 58 years. Because we've always liked family members in each premises, um, with the demise of, first of all, my grandfather, then my father, and then uncles, um, it just came a point where, bit by bit, we eventually let the cafes go. And obviously the major one that people remember is the, the demolition of the Oystermouth Square, the, the original forte, which was a, a big upheaval for the, the people, the villagers of Mumbles, um, and a big upheaval for us because we lost our home at the same time, but managed to relocate it across the road next to the post office um, in 1970. Stayed there till 1984 and then just the one premises here today. So even in the, however, however long that is, for that I've been here 30 plus years, um, Limeslade itself has changed from very much a holiday destination with the Woolen Chalets up Plunge Lane and you had the caravan park at the top. In the 60s and 70s then you had the concrete chalets being built, bungalow chalets, and the flats next door to the cafe. It's very much now a residential area. And uh, lovely to see people walking past with the coastal path now open all around Wales and 
So with my daughter now being the fourth generation, Amelia, she passing, I'm passing on the baton to her to continue the good work that my family, luckily for me, have managed to set up and thrive. I very much without all our loyal customers through the generations, I would like to thank them because without them we wouldn't still be trading now after 85 years. So I'd like to thank them. I spoke to Grafton Mags, one of many loyal customers who was at Forte's on their opening day in 1936. Here's what he had to say. Well, a very good morning to you. Uh, I must apologise for sitting down, but uh, I've been d dragged from my sick bed because I couldn't possibly say no to Lucia Macari or any other member of the Macari family. Dear friends for many years from the day they first came to Mumbles. Now, I was born in 1925. Uh, <coughs> now, it is 2021. And if you went to school and you did sums, you will work it out that I am 96 years of age. And at the moment, today, feeling it. But that's by the way. Anyway, on the corner of the chemist shop boots, this was owned by uh, Lowthers. Lowthers and the chemists were there. Next to it was um, the post office on the same side, not opposite as it once did. Opposite was the church. And on the corner, now it is, as I say, the chemist, which eventually became Boots. Now, on the other corner, uh, <coughs> on the bit which was knocked down eventually completely, there was a, a, a rather odd-shaped house or shop, which extended into the shops on the seaside of the Duns. And there, those shops were... Uh, <coughs> created a barrier between the street, the Duns, and the sea. And I think that when it was taken away, the village lost something in losing that one. And it lost the end building facing uh, Boots the Chemist on the square. Now that, that building, one morning we came down early in the year to see fencing going up. All the experts and members were saying what it was. Somebody said they're building another chapel. Uh, some said it was going to be a clinic, something there were all sorts of rumors. And then a notice went up. And I forget the exact wording of it, but um, it said on it was uh, words to the effect, this site has been acquired by Charles Forte for the construction of an ice cream parlor. So that's what it's all about. Of course, we didn't pronounce it Forte. We pronounced it Fort. The owners, Fortes, were going to give away free ice cream. Well, this was rumoured, first of all, but there it was in black and white. So, <coughs> on May, we all looked forward to this, and we all thought we'd be very lucky if we managed to get through the queue once and have one ice cream. That, that day it opened, I was down there early to get up to the front of the queue, and I stood about sixth. With me was John Clements and Kenny Bale, I remember it well, and we lined up, and the queue started building up. It went past the block, down to where you could once upon a time walked down Newton Road and walked straight onto the beach in an underpass. It went past that, onto the bus, over the bus route which came into Mumbles, uh, way, way back. And it started, the chattering was coming, the laughing, etc. And then there was activity and the front door opened there and we were let into a queue. And what was it like inside? Well, they picked blue as the dominant colour, and it was rather good because it was an iciness about it. But then it was this beautiful pale blue, the glass, the polished floors, and there were 
quality seating and tables, not like we were used to in public places. We went in and we walked across the floor and there was a big smile and I was handed a cone. First thing I noticed was uh, <coughs> the cleanliness of the counter and the barrels all there and the instruments that they were using to dispose the ice cream. I saw things which uh, I didn't know what they were for. I'd never seen anything like it before. They were all there. Although there was no coffee being made, there was a lovely smell of ice cream and coffee. Now that's a rare blend that I've never smelled anywhere else except in Fortes. That ice cream was delicious. I've never tasted ice cream. It was smooth, snow white, unlike the yellowish of all the others. It was marvellous. So, showing enterprise, I went to the back of the queue and I came round and it took me about, they were working hard. Half an hour, I was back in the front, went in, uh, tried to pull a face. But anyway, I got away with it three times. But the fourth time when I came in, a hand came out in front and the rumor went around that he was going to, that he would pick us out and uh, that we were gonna, uh, <coughs> We're going to be t taken somewhere and done away with if we didn't behave ourselves and bugger off. That was the short message. So we called it a day. Gradually it took on and then it became a meeting place. So whereas before we all had cups of tea, once we tasted this Italian coffee or an Italian ice cream, in comfort, to, uh, you went to the counter, gave your order, it was brought to your table for you. And uh, <coughs> as I say, we gradually uh, accepted what it was as an ice cream parlour. In other words, it was for using, for company. And people started coming down from Swansea and people started coming from other parts of town. And uh, business people, in the sh little shops, would nip out, go in for a little break, and have a cup of coffee in Forties. Forties had arrived. Now then, they had two sons, Elio and Olympio, who came to our school. One was a year or two older, one was a year or two younger. Olympio was the younger, and dear Elio was the older. Elio was in the year above me, and Olympio was the year below me. And we used to, I used to walk home with him and we became friends. And that was a friendship that lasted throughout my life. And I was proud to know Elio and Olympio. They were kind. And then I remember the sad day we lost, uh, lost Olympio. And Elio broke his heart. They had all those MGs they collected. They collected MGs. They had a, a perfect MG of every mark in their house in Caswell, covered in sheets. And the two of them together used to clean those cars. And he lost Olympio. And one day in the chair, he was talking to me with tears in his eyes. And he was saying, I've never been able to go back and lift those sheets without Olympio. That's the sort of family they were. My 90th birthday, six years ago, I went down to Limestone with my brother to have a coffee. And we ordered them and we sat outside. And a few minutes later, out came smiling the lovely Lucia, smiling like a Cheshire cat. And she put in front of me and my brother Colin a Forte's. Uh, um, my mind's going. Uh, a Forte's ice, the big one. Knickerbocker Glory. Knickerbocker Glory. Knickerbocker glory. <laughs> she put it, put it, in, put it in front of me, and happy birthday. That's the sort of woman she is. I go down there regularly, or did until we had the COVID strike, and I still find that this wonderful ice cream parlor lives on, and that is what Forties brought to Mumbers. It was a turning point. Uh, by chance, you say, I don't know. 
Or was it just the genius of that Italian gentleman, who it must have been a forte, who put it there? And I talked far too long. I do apologize. Thank you very much indeed. Long may forties reign. It's been so nice to reflect on the history of this parlour, to think it has been in Mumbles for over 85 years. It's a truly remarkable achievement, and it's a credit to Lucia, her daughter Amelia, and their family for running this successful parlour all these years. And long may it continue. <laughs>